Hey guys, my name is Brandon Hartcastle and I don't have the best testimony ever, but it is a testimony nonetheless. The reason why I bring up testimony, um, in case you don't know what that means, it's just basically me saying, I'm testifying of how I became into a relationship with God. If you're anything like me five, six years ago, I was looking, I watched a video like this and just be like, oh, you know, that's cool. You got your, your faith thing going on, your Christianity thing going on, but that's not me. I don't know how you can know God or, or anything like that. I can't live that Christian lifestyle. That was me. But I'm here to tell you today that you, you can know God and God can know you. And basically I'm testifying on my, how I became to relationship of knowing God. And the best way to say it is it's real. It's real. It's real. That's the best way I can say it. So basically starting out, I grew up in a mixed family. My mom's white, my dad's black. They came into relation from completely different backgrounds. Uh, my mom was adopted when she was about two. Uh, from Jewish parents who loved her very much. She was a single child. And then my dad was a, a child of eight. He came back from a, a Christian, more Christian background. You know, my mom had a little bit of uh, trauma before she was adopted. She had like a broken arm or something like that. That's from what I've heard. Uh, so that kind of transferred into her adulthood and, and some of the problems and demons that she faced when she was an adult. But my early childhood was good. Um, as far as I can remember, my parents split up though when I was about three. I grew up with my father um, until about the age of 12. We went to church intermittently. I had a whole bunch of friends kind of on my street that I would play with. You know, I think my, my cousin was my best friend at the time. Um, I, I had some other good friends at the time too, but you know, I, I would say uh, also going to church, like I, I was baptized when I was about like 10 or 11, I think. And I feel like that's when God first kind of claimed me, even though I kind of did a little squiggly line in my, my adventure to find him and him to know me, um, I feel like that's kind of where it started. But it wasn't like an every week thing that we were going, it was just very intermittently. And my dad installed biblical principles into me. He would read the Bible to me sometimes and tell me what God values in the world. So he was a very good man in that and just very installing uh, principles and purpose into my life. I think I carried that with me throughout my adulthood. Later on, uh, the financial situation that me and my dad were in, I had to eventually move in with my mom and my stepdad at the time. That's when I became into full knowledge of some of my mom's problems of her alcohol and drug addiction. She would um, sometimes leave the house for weeks at a time. Um, sometimes she would uh, go to recovery houses and the house was always just had negativity, division, anger, a lot of yelling going on in the house. There was just a lot going on. Uh, police came to the house uh, multiple times. It was just not a place for, for children to grow up in. It was very traumatic and um, as bad as it hurt, that's the, that's the truth. And I think I masked it through sports and acting and friends. Um, but you know, growing up, I was just doing what the world was doing, you know? Trying to talk to girls, going out, finding parties, uh, drinking, doing drugs. I was doing the whole nine, you know, like that's that's like the American culture. That's just what we do here in America. And there's nothing wrong with that, but like I was looking for attention and, and love through those things. I realize now looking back on it. And also I, I feel like this is very important for me to say is also one of my outlets was acting. And I realized that this was something that I used to, mat to, to give me purpose because I would go on stage, guys, and I would perform, and then when I would get off stage, people would come up to me and be like, Brandon, that was such a good show, or I, I love the way that you did this, and, and, and feeling me, filling me with affection and attention and things that I was missing out on at home. I thought in that moment, as a young man, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do to get the attention and the love that I've been seeking for that I didn't have. And so I used that. That was like, that was such a big burning fire inside of my heart to become a celebrity, become an actor, to become this big shot. Because I was like, you know, I'm gonna make it. This is how I'm going to show the world that I deserve to be loved. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, like, as much as I don't wanna glorify the things that I was doing in, in high school, um, into the military, and all those things, it was fun. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> I can't lie, it was fun. I was having a great time. I had, a, I had great friends. 
Um, we took care of each other for the most part. Their, their families were awesome. Um, so I, I don't want to like beat up on the, the life that I had in high school. I, I loved it. It was great people that I went to high school with. I, I'm not going to lie about that. And the things that we're doing, we're, we're having a lot of fun, but it wasn't, it wasn't sustainable. It wasn't the truth. It wasn't what was really going to give me the things I was looking for, like intimacy and love uh, through relationship. It, it wasn't any, it wasn't any of that. My junior summer, I ended up moving to Florida to go visit a buddy of mine, my two best friends um, at the time, Javier and Alex. And so I ended up having one of the best summers I'd ever had with them. And right before I got onto the plane to come back to Oregon, they, you know, they offered for me to kind of stay with them. And I just called my mom. I said, mom, this is, this is what I want to do. This is, I want to stay here and she's like you know what you're almost 18 now so you can make your own decision so you know I approve so basically I just I just stayed there and um, during that time in high school you know I, I started making new friends I was on the wrestling team I was pretty decent at that but I didn't have the support system you know I didn't have uh, people to financially support me to go to a big acting school a mentor of mine said hey maybe you should go into check out the military so I walked into the recruiter's office and listen to this the recruiter told me three things he's like you're always gonna have money in your pocket you're gonna be able to travel and you're gonna get an education a free one and where I was in my life that's all I need to hear that was my golden ticket to success I'll figure out the acting thing later but right now I have to survive and so we started the process of getting into the military. Next thing you know, that summer I ended up getting kicked out of where I was living. I realized that I couldn't go back home to Oregon because the situation with my mom was just not good. My, my dad and, and I didn't really have the best relationship and the financial situation didn't make sense to me. And I, I knew I needed to get out through the military that I already started a process here with. So I ended up living on my girlfriend's brother's couch at the time for, for time being before I end up getting pulled into a very lovely man by the name of Mike Boyzo who ended up saving basically saving my life and I lived with him until he helped me out through the process of getting into the military got into the military and next thing you know um, it was just like wrestling you know it was just like get the job done do what you need to do uh, grit your teeth and, and move on Welcome to the still house. Look at the trash! It's the freaking trash! Break it down. American icons. Rocky Balboa. Tricks. All the fortunate. All tricks. Jake Cobra. All tricks. All day. We had this thing called the military training instructor and basically he was with you 24 7 to make sure that you got through point a to point z and becoming an airman on the other side a <laughs> basic one basically and and this guy was always on your butt i mean if there was a hair on your uniform or something out of place or your hangers were flipped the wrong way inside of your locker you were gonna get yelled at there was only one day that you can get away from this guy and that was sunday mornings and so me and a couple buddies, we were like, okay, let's just go to church so we can get a, we can get out of here for a little bit. And so we all marched to church and we walk into this building. And this is when things became started to become real to me about God. Next thing you know, they were singing this song called Hosanna by Hillsong. And it goes, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I started feeling over, overwhelmed by emotions. And the reason why this is so significant is because I had hardened my heart towards my mom for years. And I think through putting up so many boundaries between me and her, I just become numb to pain and feeling and showing emotion and things like that. So I hadn't cried in a long, long time. And I remember, I remember the lyrics of the verse going, heal my heart and make it clean. Open my eyes to the world unseen. Show me how you, show me how to love like you have loved me. 
And when I heard that, tears come streaming down my face. And I just thought that was the weirdest thing. I thought it was the weirdest thing because I just started bawling my eyes out uncontrollably. And every week they had like an altar call, which basically means you can walk up to the front, like pray for God to come to your life, pray for Jesus to walk in. And I remember every week I went up, you know, and I think God was really starting to turn my heart at that time. And I told God, I was like, Lord, when I, when I get to my unit, I'll go to church. I'll, I'll start to pursue you and do, and do that, do that thing. Like you start to make like deals with God, like, and it's just ridiculous to even think about that nowadays. And part of my training, one of the parts of my training, there was this week where um, it, it was basically like the hell week of tacti. Basically you guys just go out in the woods and you do land navigation and you practice all the things that you would do out in a normal mission, um, you know, downrange in Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever. And they keep you up the whole time. They really try to stress your body to, to see if you have what it takes to make it through this training. And I remember laying in this dirt hole that I had dug, pull, holding up security with this little rubber gun that I had. And this this guy pulls up in like this, this gator, I don't know, this four wheeler that's made for like outdoors. He comes in to refill up our water in our little base. And he, as he's walking out, I kind of pull his attention. I'm like, hey man, man, man. And he had already graduated. He was one of the graduated students. I was like, hey man, is it worth it like to, to go through this? Like, how's it on the other side? Like, what's it like, man? Just, I was looking for motivation. I was looking for encouragement, something, because I was seeing dudes drop out left and right that I was really close friends with. And he's like, you know what, man? It, it's worth it on the other side. Like, I'm just hanging out, playing video games with the cadre and, um, you know, just eating good food. And and he and I remember this. He, he said to me, "Just keep your head up, dude. You got it. Just you you got it. Just keep working, dude." He said something in that manner. He was like, "Just keep 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 your motivation. Keep working hard. You're gonna make it. I believe in you." And he walked away and he got in his little gator and drove off. And I remember just crying in this little hole, thinking to myself, "God, please, like I just need to make it through this. I just need to make it through this." please just get me through this. And I ended up making it through training and then ended up getting to my unit. I got to my unit, finally after all the training, I had made it through uh, the TACB training and I, ne I didn't go to church once. I was got caught up in the world again, doing the same things I was doing in high school, maybe even worse. And you know, before you knew it, it was like four years had passed and I was more upset more angry, more lost than I had been before. Just depressed. Like I remember there, I remember there were Sundays I just work, walk into work and just think like, for the first person that says something mean to me or I don't like, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him as hard as I can. I remember days like that, angry, just so angry for no reason. And eventually, I ended up meeting this girl. And she wanted to go to church with me, so I ended up going to church with her, and I liked the church, and we started going to church. Eventually, we didn't work out, and I would go to the church just to see her. And then eventually, I just started going to the church just to go to the church. And I started going to church every once in a while, like by myself, just to go. And before you knew it, um, I was like, you know what, I, I, need to, I need to like keep going to this. This is like good for me. <laughs> this is like good for me. And next thing you know, this new guy got to our unit and he looked really familiar. We started having a conversation. I remember it was, it was the same guy that I had talked to when I was training, when I was in that hole, just holding up security. And his name was Tyrone. And within like five minutes of us talking, we already, we were already talking about God. And he invited me to this Bible study that he was going to. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to church kind of, I need to go to this Bible study. And so I go to this Bible study and I realized I didn't know anything about God. Like all the stuff that I thought I knew about God, I knew nothing about God because they were talking in depth about like certain verses in the Bible and whatnot. And I was just like, dude, I, I, I have so much to learn here, but I was so intrigued. Like my spirit was intrigued about what they were saying. It was like weird. Cause God was like drawing me, even though I did, I was like spiritually dead. Like I had a veil over my eyes. I didn't understand what they were talking about. Like I was intrigued about what they were talking about because to me, it started to become real at that point. When it starts to become real, you you like start to think to yourself like, 
hmm, like this is an interesting story to listen to. When this was all going on, I had a deep curiosity for miracles, like knowing the power of God, right? And so where do I go? I'm a millennial, where do I go? YouTube, right? Next thing you know, I'm on YouTube looking for miracles. And before you know it, I come on this video and it's this guy named Nathan or Nate talking about how he got healed from stage four cancer. And I'll put the link below just so you can see the same story that I saw, but the miracle is, is real. And I end up, I end up like, after watching the video, you know, my jaw's on the floor, you know, I'm dragging it around my house. I'm like, I gotta know if this is real. So I end up messaging him on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, just finding any way to talk to this man. And I, I just wanted to know. I wanted to know if it was real. I think we all kind of deep down want to know if it's real. And three weeks goes by and I'm in the car driving back from my girlfriend's house. I get this call. Hello? Hey Brandon, it's uh, it's Nathan. Hey, what's going on, man? I'm so, I'm so sorry, I, uh, I got caught up. I just had a baby and I saw your messages, but I want to get back to you. At this point, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out because I'm like, I've been trying to hear from this guy for so long now, like three weeks, right? And now he picks up like, this is me talking to a celebrity right now. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah you know, that's, that's, this is awesome. You know, I can't, I'm studying over my words. He's like, yeah, man, let me, uh, I just want to hear a little bit about your story and kind of what's going on. But like, and then he goes into sharing the gospel with me, basically the good news of Jesus Christ for like 30 minutes. He ends up telling me about how he got healed from stage four cancer miraculously. And you, you can watch the video, but I'm not going to talk about it. Maybe I'll talk about it on another video. But I hang up the phone, and after an hour and a half of being on the phone with this guy, I realized, okay, there's two things I can do with this. I could either believe that this random stranger called me to tell me about his miracle and that it actually happened in his body and that it's real, or I can believe that he just likes to tell lies to people and that's how, like how he gets off on, on life. Like, but the logical sense made that it was really him and that it really happened to him because it was just such a real and genuine conversation. So at that point, it was like, it was like scripture became real to me at that point. It was like everything became real to me at that exact moment. Right, and this is one, this is the scripture that I wanna read for this part right here. <laughs> it's Mark 8, 34 to 39. And it basically says, whoever wants to be my, my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the son of man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his father's glory with the holy angels. Basically what I'm saying is like, I knew that if I gave my life to God, if I gave my life to Christ, I had to be willing to die for it because I'm an all in or nothing person. And I had made that decision right there and then I was like, what if I became this celebrity? What if I became this famous actor? What if I be got all the money in the world? What would it mean? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to die. Like having the most fun in the world, what would it mean if eternity is a real thing and God is a real thing and if I just missed it if I it had so much fun in the world but I missed the truth of who God is and what God has done in this world for me and that's when I made the decision like literally in my head right there and then I was like yeah I, I, I don't know what this means for me and Jesus, but I believe in him. I'm gonna put my faith in him. Literally like, probably like the next day, I came to Tyrone, Tyrone and I, I was like, can you baptize me? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, cool, can you do it next week? And I got baptized like literally, maybe like a week and a half later. Changed my life forever. Ever since then, I was on fire for God. Read through the whole Bible was preaching at work. I, like I was just on fire. Like the, the Holy Spirit, like so real, it came inside of me and like 
was working its magic. Like I never felt so happy and joyful and just like my whole situation had just changed. My whole mindset had just changed. Like everything changed. It just all changed. I don't know how else to say it, but like sitting where I was, like thinking about the whole Jesus thing, like, oh, you know, that's cool that you got your Christianity thing, but I can never do that. Like that was, I just feel so foolish saying that now. Like it's, it, it is real. It's real. Knowing God is real. It's, it's real. And actually serving him now and getting to be in the body of Christ. It's like every day he's just giving you more and more treats of himself. It's just so real. Anyways, get back to the point. The point is after that, the Lord had just met me where I was, you know, I was still drinking, going out, you know, fornicating, doing all that kind of stuff. It was just, God was like, okay, well, you know, I see where you're at, but at least you trusted me, you know, and I'm willing to take you into, you know, more sanctification. I'm willing to make you more holy from this point forward. It, it wasn't anything like, oh, like now that I, I'm doing this, I gotta give up all these things. Like I was still actively participating in that lifestyle. It was just a switch to me. Like I, I gotta trust this from now on. Like this is something that I wanna believe in from now on and God used that. And through knowing and loving Jesus more, like those things just slowly dissipated out of my life. And, and it wasn't like I was like actually like, oh, I gotta be, you know, I gotta get this out of it because I'm a Christian now. It wasn't like that at all. And and I'll talk more about what it means to actually like when Jesus meets you where you are, but he just met me where I was. And it was the most beautiful thing that I could ever witness or testify about because from something that was just so outside of me to something that is just so a part of me now, it must have been crazy. It must have been crazy for people who saw me for who I was. That's one of the reasons why, why I leave up, you know, things on my Instagram of, you know, things I was doing in the past because I just, that's who I was. Why am I, why would I be ashamed of who I was in the past? Like, I'm, I'm not ashamed of who I was because look at what God has done in my life. She's so amazing. He's so amazing, guys. And so that's a little bit about my test. That's my full testimony, but I just wanted to share that because I felt like that's the very first principal thing that I, I need to share because if I do start this channel, it's something that people are gonna ask me about, you know? And I wanna testify of God and what he's done in my life because it's just so important. He's just so good. And I, I'm telling you right now, he, you can know him and he can know you. It's just so amazing. So I hope that encourages you for those of you who are in the body of Christ. And I hope that makes you question what your relationship is with God right now if you don't have one, because you can have one and you can know God. He's there and he's waiting. You just have to seek him with your whole heart. And we'll talk about that more later. Anyways, guys, God bless you and have a wonderful day.